The sky is falling. Oh my God, the market is gonna crash. What are we gonna do? Should I buy? Should I sell? Should I stay sit? How much longer should I wait? What are the interest rates gonna do? So many questions, guys. I know it's kind of a trying time right now. So today in this market update, I'm gonna unpack all that for you and explain it in a way that hopefully it's easier to understand because I see this stuff out all the time. You know, other agents or title reps, they'll post a chart with numbers and graphs and blah, 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 blah. But what does all that mean to you? How does that translate to what's important to you as a buyer or a seller? Well, today we're gonna unpack that and hopefully it's going to help you understand it better and hope to help you make better decisions whether you need to buy or sell. So check it out. All right, guys, thank you for watching. As you know, most of you already know me, right? Robert Tolnite with Home Group. And I'm always looking for better ways, guys, to help you understand the market better so you can make better decisions, whether you're buying or selling now, in a year, or in 10 years, it doesn't matter. I just wanna be able to unpack this for you in a way where it makes sense to you and you'll be happy with the information that you get. All right, so let's get right into it. Let's not waste any time. So big elephant in the room has been the interest rates. No way to sugarcoat it, guys. We know they suck right now. The feds brought them up super quickly and more than we would like to. Um, you know, just two points in literally like two months and everything since then has completely flipped upside down. As most of you know, the market was totally in the seller's favor for the last couple of years through the pandemic. And now it really flipped the other way around. Okay, but let's talk about what that means to you because I'm sure you hear this all the time. What can we do about it? And how does that impact you now or in the future? So first, let's talk about, let's talk to the home buyer. So if you are a home buyer in this market, or you're considering being a home buyer, or you've been sitting on the fence thinking about maybe buying or not, let's talk about how this impacts you. So as you look at this chart, obviously the interest rates are the highest they've been in a long time, probably since about the 2004, 2005, 2006, era just before the market crashed. And that scares people sometimes, right? Anything that's similar to the past, they're like, oh my God, that's what happens next. We don't know if that kind of a market crash is coming. We don't have enough data. There's tons of people on YouTube that if you go and check them, they'll tell you it's crashing, right? We don't have data that goes out that far. We do know it's an adjustment in the market. Prices are coming down. But what does that mean? Again, what does that mean for you as a buyer? Should you buy a home now or not? Well, it depends. It depends on your personal situation, okay? So if I were you, if I were a home buyer, I absolutely would buy a home right now if I'm just moving into town from somewhere else for a job and I need a place to live, I would still purchase instead of rent. Or if you are renting and your lease is expiring, most likely your uh, your landlord is gonna increase that rent. So just look at the difference in payment. If your rent is about the same as your mortgage would be for a house that you wanna buy, even though the rates right now are high, we'll talk about that in a second, how we can help you with that. It's most likely still better for you to buy a home than keep waiting to see what happens with your rent. Because what we know for sure, your rent's most likely gonna go up probably every every year, right? Any landlord is gonna wanna increase that rent if they can, right? Where if you purchase a home, you're locked in, at least you know what your payment's gonna be for as long as you choose to. Or the third reason I would definitely buy a home right now is if I found a super, super good deal, right? Right now we are seeing better and better deals it just takes a little bit of work. You gotta write more offers. You gotta look at properties that have sitting on the market for a long time, find that desperate seller, and you can find some super good deals already, but we know more and more good deals are gonna be coming. So you can either be patient or just continuously search. Don't sit on the sideline because you might get that super good deal sooner rather than later. So don't sit and wait, just be aggressive. Call me, text me, email me. I'm happy to do that research for you and we'll take the time that it needs to get you to that good deal so you can be happy with whatever you're buying regardless of interest rate. Because one great thing, guys, that I've heard recently from one of our coaches is you marry the home, but you're only dating the interest rate. 
right? So you're gonna buy the home that you love, but you're only dating the interest rate in the sense that in a year or two or three or four or five, however long it may take for the interest rates to come back down to uh, an interest rate that you'd be happy with, you refinance and get that lower payment. So keep that in mind as you're thinking about whether it is time or it, you wanna wait as far as buying a home. So I hope that makes sense. Let's keep going. So continuing to talk about interest rates because they seem to be the biggest hurdle. If you look at this chart, guys, in the big scheme of things, the interest rate that we have right now compared to the last almost 50 years, it's about an average interest rate or on the lower side of what interest rates have been or should be. In my opinion, just for as long as I've been in this business, I think an interest rate anywhere from about four and a half to five and a half, maybe 6% is a good interest rate. So anything in that range for the 15 years that I've been doing this, I feel like that's a good interest rate. When is that gonna come back to that point? We don't know, it could be a month, it could be six months, it could be a year. It's none, none of it is in our control. It's all the feds choosing to do whatever they choose to do. As you know, the, the reason that they have to keep increasing the interest rate is their only tool they have against inflation. So hopefully they'll get there soon and at least stop raising it and maybe eventually soon we'll, we'll start seeing it come back down a little bit. But all we can do on that is wait and see. But remember, we're only dating the interest rate, okay? You don't have to keep it forever. When the time is right, you trade it in, you know? Okay, that's a bad example because you don't really want to trade in your girlfriend. I don't know. I don't know how that works anymore, but you can trade in your interest rate at some point when it comes back down. And as you can see from this, from this chart, guys, 18% interest that we saw in the early 80s, that is not normal. Two to three percent interest rate that we've seen in the last couple of years during the pandemic, that is not normal. Okay, those are exceptions, those are just things that you're gonna see once in maybe a lifetime or in you know 20, 30 years. I'm not, you know, it's just very rare that you're gonna see those extremes. Okay, hopefully, what we're gonna see pretty soon is that median somewhere in there in four or five percent, maybe even six. Uh, and that's really where, where it should stay. You know, right now, the feds have it up to just over 7%. As you can see in this chart, that's the highest interest rate we've seen in as long as we can remember. You know, like that, that, that's a high interest rate on top of the fact that prices have gone up as high as they have. So all that put together, guys, means what? As a buyer, like I said, those are the three reasons I would buy a home. And if the interest rate is really, really an issue and it's either stopping you from qualifying for the home that you want because the payment's too high, or you're just not happy as an investor that the profit margin is not where it should be, lenders and banks have come up with some programs that are helping buyers make this a little bit easier, okay? So if you look here, we're, so what I mean by that is they have a couple of options where you as a buyer can buy down the interest rate up front. So instead of starting with the interest rate that, for example, right now it's 7.125, you can buy that down either 1% lower or 2% lower which what, with what we call a 2-1 buy down. Here is exactly how that works on this chart and see if this makes sense to you. Lenders have given you options where you can either buy down the interest rate permanently meaning that you're gonna pay the lender some extra cash up front in the closing to give your low rate, or you can do what has been very popular in these last few months, a 2-1 buy down. That means that you're buying down the rate for the first two years. So to give you an example of what that would look like, take a look at this um, column here. We're gonna look at what an average home is between 1,500 and 2,000 square feet at a price of 440 thousand dollars and this was done uh, this chart was done when the interest rates were a little bit lower so we're just going to look for example purposes if the interest rate was 5.13 which would be amazing right now we don't have those rates right now but just to give you an example of what how this would change and how this would help you as a home buyer 
you get so your payment would be twenty five ninety four at that interest rate just uh, with your taxes and insurance. It shows you down here at the bottom what we're estimating for that. So, but don't worry about the details. Let's just look at the numbers so you kind of just understand and get an idea if this buy down would be worth it for you to do and how this could help you. So you can either ask the seller for ten thousand dollars price reduction, so you get a better deal on the home, or at least you think you do which would lower your payment by $56 a month, okay? Or you can do one of these two things. You can do a permanent buy down with the lender. So that means you would pay the lender up front to lower your interest rate one full percentage point for five, from 5.13 to 4.13. And that would lower your payment by $237, which sounds great, right? And that is a savings for the remainder of the of the loan. So if anybody keeps their loan 30 years, not really, right? We know that most people move every five to seven years. But still, that's a good uh, discount. That's a good reduction in your payment. But now look at this, the 2-1 buy down, that will lower your interest rate for the first year by two points. That's why it's called the 2-1 buy down. So the first year your interest rate will be lowered from 5.13 to 3.13 lowering your payment by $459 and then the second year that rate would go up to 4.13 that's why it's called the 2-1 buy down again so the first year it lowers your interest rate by two points the second year it lowers your interest rate by one point and then the third year, it will go back to the original rate that is today when you sign up for your loan. So it will go back up to 5.13. But And we'll, go, we'll get back to that in a second. But look at the savings that you're getting. Your monthly payment is going to be so much lower. And this here shows you how much it's going to cost the seller. So that means I'm going to ask the seller on your behalf to give you this credit of either $12,000 or $9,000. So you can pay that money directly to the lender to give you these rate reductions, okay? So obviously that's a very good tool that you can use as a buyer. Now let's go back to this 2-1 buy down, which in my opinion, that's the, that's the best one to go with. If I were to buy a house, that's the one I would choose. And the reason why is because I believe that in two years, when this rate goes back to the original rate at 5.13, or whatever it is today, right? When you lock in your rate for the house that you're buying, I'm most likely gonna refinance at a lower interest rate. I am assuming, which is wrong, right? We always talk about don't assume, but I have to be pretty comfortable that the interest rate will come down in a couple of years. Maybe it'll take three years, maybe it'll take four years, I don't know, but even if that happens and my interest payment goes back to that higher payment, which is this $25.94, obviously I can afford that payment because the lender qualifies you on what you can afford right now, which is this higher payment, but they're buying you this reduction of payment for the first two years. So you just have to kind of decide what's best for you. Most people prefer stability, so they'll buy the interest rate down for the permanent one, which is only one percentage point lower, still saving you over $200 a month. So that's still a great savings. So if that feels more comfortable for you, that's the one you go for. I don't mind taking a little bit of risk, but everybody's different. So you just have to do what's best for you and we'll discuss that together with your lender I would do the two one buy down and then when it goes back up, I'll either you know make that payment for another year or two or however long it takes to for the interest rates to come back down to somewhere where I want to refinance it into. So I hope that makes sense. I know that's a lot of information. So I always tell you guys, always never hesitate to call me, text me, email me, and we can run through that together with your lender or my lender if you don't have one and we'll explain how that works and we'll make sure that it makes sense to you before you pull the trigger on anything. So again guys, the last thing I would say for you, the home buyers, what we see is a declining number of contracts every month, but a great increase of inventory that we've seen over the last six months. 
So what does that mean to you? Why is that important? That means that you as a buyer have so much more inventory to choose from, which helps you get a better deal, right? It's like anything else. The more of it is out there, the better deal you're gonna get. So it's just a matter of us doing our homework with you and working with you and helping you to find those sellers that are a bit more desperate and they really need to sell. And that's where you're gonna get those great deals. So don't give up, don't sit on the sideline because some those, you don't wanna miss a good deal just because of what you hear on the news. You have nothing to lose but by trying. So test me out, let's go, let's work at it together and find you a good deal. And to close it up, just to make it a little bit more local, you can take a look at this chart right here and it will it kind of shows you the different parts of our valley where you're gonna be able to get the better deals. So you can see here on this map, it's gonna show you the markets around town that are gonna give you the best deals as a buyer. So what you want to look at is its strong buyer markets, which is at the bottom of this chart. So you can see most of the east side of town, Gilbert, Maricopa, Queen Creek, and Buckeye are going to be the strongest buyer markets where you're probably going to get the best deals. And mostly that's because of all the new builds that have been out there. So their inventory is much higher on that side of town than in most other areas around the valley. So that's where you're going to be able to find the best deals and be able to get the best discount. And then you're looking at a weak buyer market, which is still very good areas to get good deals. That would be Peoria, Avondale, Tempe, and Surprise. So even there, you're gonna be able to find some great deals because it's already a buyer market. And then you have your balanced market where supposedly there's still about the same number of buyers and sellers. Uh, but my guess is gonna be that even there, we're gonna be able to find you some great deals like Phoenix, Mesa, Glendale, Chandler, and Goodyear. The only four cities that we still have, uh, we still consider a seller market are the uh, east and northeast side of the valley where our luxury, most of the luxury markets are gonna be. Paradise Valley, Fountain Hill, Scottsdale, and Cave Creek. That's where you're going to uh, still see the seller probably be in the advantage. So no good deals there, but you can see here almost all the other areas in town, you're going to be able to find some good deals. So you just let me know where you want to be and we will find you a good deal. All right. So now let's talk to you home sellers. Ah, yeah, yeah. I am sorry guys, but that train has passed with all the crazy golden nuggets and all the nuts craziness and, 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 it, I don't even know how to explain what, what we saw the last two years. It was totally your time to sell. It was totally a seller's market, but now that is over, okay? So no more craziness on the seller side. You now have lost the upper hand to the buyers, okay? And that's not to be mean or to scare you. It's literally just to educate you so you don't go into the market wanting to sell your home with the wrong impression or with the wrong expectations because you're gonna be disappointed if you're listening to your neighbor, Joe, who sold his house in March or February right next door to you and sold it for $70,000 over list price with no appraisal and blah, 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 blah and he's telling you, you should go do the same, that market is gone. That is not happening, guys. So what do I mean by that? Let's just go through these quick numbers and these quick charts so you can see what that means and hopefully will help you make a better decision as a home seller. If you have to sell right now, these are the things you want to be aware of and make sure that you understand so you can make the best decision for you and your family when you go to the market. And as always, guys, you've, if it's not me, if you're not hiring me as your listing agent, which you must be crazy if you don't, um, just kidding. But if you are have somebody else that you're working with, please make sure you do your due diligence that they're very aware and very well educated in what the current market conditions are so you don't leave money on the table to make sure that they do a fantastic, amazing job of marketing your home, that they don't cut corners because now it's more important than ever for your marketing to be on point and for your listing agent to do 10 times the work 
that we had to do over the last two years. So make sure you choose the right agent to list your home if you have to sell your home. All right, so let's just go through these real quick. So hopefully it will help you guys make sense and prepare you better. As always, you want to prepare your home the best possible way you can for the market. Okay, you gotta do a little fix up here and there, some touch ups, really good clean up job, declutterize, all those things. If you don't know what that means, call me, text me, email me, just shoot me a text. I'll send you our report that we send to our clients to help them prepare the home for the market with all the different things that you should do. Whether you do all of them or not, it's up to you, but I have it, so let me know if you want it. I'll text it or email it to you. So pricing the home correctly is gonna be more important than ever right now, okay? That doesn't mean overpricing it more than what the previous uh, neighbor sold it for. It's quite the opposite. If you want your home to sell, I would suggest pricing it at least three to four, maybe 5% under market price. That way it will sell quicker rather than later and it's still not guaranteed that it will sell quicker, but that's gonna give you a better chance. Now, if your home is absolutely gorgeous, remodeled, beautifully done, then we could still test the market at the top price in that neighborhood and see if we can find that buyer that will absolutely fall in love with your home but it's still not guaranteed that it will happen. And again, why is that? It's because buyers have so many more choices right now, guys, so many more choices than before. Just to put it into perspective, back in March, February, March, we had about 5,500 listings in our MLS for buyers to choose from. You wanna guess how many we have now? Over 18,000 listings, guys, that buyers have the choice to search through and pick from. That's almost three times more listings. So you definitely wanna price it right. Now here's the three things that typically tell us that the market has shifted, and hopefully this would make a little bit more sense for you and help you see where the market is from a seller's perspective. One of the first things that we see when a market starts to shift is price reductions. So the pricing of the home will start seeing sellers reduce the price because they're not selling as quickly as they would like to. So if you look at this chart right now, price reductions went through the roof, guys, in these last past few months. It's just what needs to be done in order to entice a buyer to put in an offer on your, on your house. See right now, almost 25% of all closings that we've had had some sort of a price reduction. And also, as you can see, the higher the price of the home, the bigger the price reduction is gonna be. That just makes sense. And we've been seeing this for months and it's continuing, and, it's, and we're continuing to see the same trend. So until people start pricing their homes better, as we recommend, we're gonna continue to see those price decreases as more houses come on the market. The second thing that we see that change um, th that we see a big change in when the market shifts is the uh, median days on the market. So during the craziness, as you can see on this map, uh, on this chart, we were on the market on average for five to six days and a home would sell. You know a lot of homes that sold in hours. Some might stay for a week or eight days. So the average of, of all the homes that sold during that crazy time was about five to six days. Now, the median time on the market is 33 days, okay? So that's a huge increase in time before we see an offer being accepted. Um, so again, the longer something stays on the market, the more price reductions you're gonna see, and that's what happens when a market slows down. Now, the third thing that confirms that the market has shifted is that all the concessions and seller credits have come back um, so concession or seller credit is the same thing. So basically what that means that a seller will give the buyer a credit that they can apply either to cover their closing costs or what's very popular now as we talked about uh, just before is to buy down the interest rate. So all these three things have already happened. So our market has flipped upside down and as a seller, you now have to be very careful on how you put your house on the market, what you do to get it prepared for the market, 
who do you work with really matters now more than ever. So do me a favor, guys, and do a little bit of research, interview a couple of different people, interview a couple of different people before you choose your listing agent because it's too important, guys. It's just too important to go with Joe Schmo or, you know, cousin Betty or whoever. Not that I have anything against family, of course, but it's just too important of a decision for you and your family to make sure that you don't leave money on the table and you hire somebody that's going to hustle and do all the things that need to get done and more to try to find you that buyer that's gonna pay a little bit more than everybody else. So super important, don't, let, don't take that lightly. All right, that is it, guys. So that is what I would say for buyers, for sellers, that's where we're at in the market right now. Other than that, as always, call me, text me, Email me, all right? Don't be afraid. Don't be embarrassed or challenge me on this. You know, tell me I'm wrong. I'm okay with that. This is all just data that I have from our amazing economists and real estate uh, gurus here in town. So this is just for our local market in Phoenix. That's all, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was helpful. If you're on YouTube, click that button, subscribe, and tap that bell so you're alerted next time another video comes out so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you soon.